So let's read from 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. Okay. And I encourage everyone to please stand up. Okay, Kuna, just so you know, if you're there in your in your Bible, just read. First John chapter 4, verse 9. It says here, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your word, for your wonderful world today, for your wonderful word today, O oh God Jesus. Help each one of us, O oh God Jesus, to open our hearts and our ears to your word and to your revelation, O oh God. May you speak freely to us, in each one of us. And Lord, Father God, I pray to O oh God Jesus that you forgive our sins, O oh God, our iniquities, O oh God Jesus, our our weakness, O oh God Jesus. Forgive us, O oh God, and may through your word today, O oh God Jesus, we may hear your word, O oh God, clearly. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, everybody say, Amen. Amen. All right. All right, praise God. Okay, so that's our word for today. If you have your notebook, please write down 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. Okay, praise God. So how many days before Christmas? How many days? 14. If you're counting. 14. 14. How many? 16. 14. 16. 14. 16. 14. 16. 16. 16. 16 days. Okay. Some of the questions, some of the popular questions that maybe you may, uh, maybe you may be asked by your coworkers is, are you ready for Christmas? <laughs> Have you asked that question? Some of your coworkers, your classmates, or maybe your family is not going to ask that, you know, because they are preparing for Christmas, or maybe you are preparing something for your parents, for your family, right, for your friends, for your for your loved ones, right? So the question is, are you ready for Christmas? Please raise your hand if you are ready for Christmas. Who's ready for Christmas? <laughs> Amen. Not only December, every day you should be ready. Right? It's not only every December that you're becoming cheerful, cheerful giver. Okay? Every December, the hearts are open, you know, to give. But not only December, but most of the year. All of the, all of the month of the year. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so mostly talking, they're talking about the gift. Is that right? When they talk about, are you ready for Christmas? They're asking about, are you ready for your gift? Are you ready? Who's ready for the gift? <laughs> Who's ready their gift to someone? You have a gift to someone. Please raise your hand. Amen. Okay, can I ask what's your gift? <laughs> He was shocked. Oh, yeah. what's the gift? It's a surprise. Amen. Praise God. But, as what our worship leader says this morning, the real season, okay? The season, the real essence of Christmas. What, what, what we are celebrating for this month of December. What are we celebrating for Christians? What? Anyone? Jesus. About? The birth of Jesus Christ. It says in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah it says there, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us child is born. The truth, through the prophet Isaiah, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. We all know that, right? That this Christmas there's a child, and not only a child, it is Jesus Christ. And what they call them, what they call him, a Messiah. A Messiah, a Savior. That's what you that's what you mean by Messiah. As our team for this month, for this year, this Christmas, okay, as our team, what's our team process? Sure love. In short, in short, it's about love. Last year we talked about about if you can remember. About give. Yeah, last December, this this December we theme our Christmas celebration. We theme this one as love. Starting January, we started about the wind love and we're ending about share the love. Do you have you noticed that? Last December we talked about about the gift. Right? You're a gift. And then December January 2018 we, we started about the wind love. Right? The wind love. Is that right? January. And then we're ending about share the love. So let's talk about love for today. Of course, we all know that the true essence of Christmas is about love. 
Do you have any other examples about what's the essence of Christmas? Do you have any other examples? What for you is Christmas? Okay, I'm going to ask a question. I have a microphone here. I can go up there. Okay, I'm going to ask all of you. Okay, so what for you is the essence of Christmas? Margaret, what is the essence of Christmas? Relationships. Relationship, praise God. Don't worry, okay, don't worry. But what is your answer? Is your, that is the true meaning to you. Okay, so don't be worried. Praise. What's the essence of Christmas? Spending time for our All right. What else? Geneva. Jean, what's the essence of Christmas? I'm saying, okay, titingin sa akin. Don't look at my eye. If you look at my eye, I'm gonna call your name. Jean. Sharing your blessings. Sharing your blessings. Bro, what's the essence of Christmas? Bring you a bunch of love. You darling. Let me explain, please. Bro, explain, please. Bring you a bunch of love. Bunch of love. <laughs> it's really wonderful, it's really nice to hear about what's the essence of love. Okay, so as I said last year, we talked about, so maybe I don't need this one. Also, it's not working. <laughs> Alright, so maybe we're not, so last year, as I said, our theme is about the gift, and this year, it's about love. The question is, are you sharing love to one another? Do you share love to one another? Who said yes? Share Jesus to one another. Not only your love, but especially Jesus. Okay? Share the love. Okay, that's our team for next week. Okay, we're so we encourage everyone to please be there. I think I believe it's one to one to six. One to six, right? No, one to six. The theme is about share the love. Okay, next week we're not we're not going to have a service here in the morning, but our service will be at the Hamlet's Plain. Later there will be an announcement, right? So share the love and do everything with love. It's first second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen, I believe. Okay? So I have a story about about love for you. Okay, I have a story about love. As you said, share the love, about giving, about blessing, about about relationship, right? So I have a short story to you, and this, this is a true story, okay? Would you agree that love is about giving? Would you agree? Yes. Okay, that's why in December we feel all the love, okay? So your friends, your classmates, your coworkers, your church mate, everyone is about giving, sharing. Do you, do you agree also love is about sharing? Yes. Do you agree? No? I'm sharing my wife. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's sharing your wife. That's right. So love is about giving and love is about sharing, right? So I have an example here, our story, okay? Me and my wife, we have a story back in the Philippines where we are, when we are, I believe we're only 18 and 19 years old, okay? We're only boyfriend girlfriends, okay? But now she's my ex, right? She's my ex-girlfriend because she's my wife now. Amen? Praise God. All right, so our story is about sharing, okay? So we love sharing. Okay? We love, me and my wife, we love sharing, okay? We love sharing and also because we don't have money during that time, okay? So that's why we're going to share. Do you know what, what were we sharing? We're sharing about a meal in Jollibee. You call it B1. Do you remember B1? Okay, it's like a menu in Jollibee, B1 burger, fries, and drinks, okay? Supposedly, as boyfriend, girlfriend, I should buy a meal for her and a meal for myself, right? But I said, she really likes Jollibee. Okay, that's our son looks like a Jollibee, okay? Okay, so she really, she really loves Jollibee, so I said, I don't have enough money for the two of us, let's share. I'm just gonna buy one meal for both of us, right? So I buy, uh, so, so we buy, we one, okay, we're sharing burger, one I buy, and then and another bite is for her, right? So while we're walking home, okay? Sa kanto yun, okay? Sa kanyang kanto, alam ni mama yun, okay? Ma our, uh, my, mama Larry knows about it, okay? Uh, so while we're walking, we're eating, we're sharing drinks, fries, and the burger. In short, in short, it's short. Okay, ulang. Okay, in short, in bur the burger is short. Okay, it's not enough for the both of us. Okay, one one burger like that. Okay, it's short for us. But I feel sometimes it's good that sometimes you don't have enough money. Okay, that the two of you are getting intimate. Okay, you are sharing. Okay, you said oh. Right? But I have another story with you with an elderly couple. Okay, with an elderly couple. Okay, this is the story. Okay. So one 
one guy, okay, one young teen, okay, saw them also in Jollibee, okay, in let's say McDonald's, okay, this, he saw them also in McDonald's sharing together, okay, it's an elderly couple, they're sharing, and he said, the guy said, oh, it's really nice to have this example, okay, when I grow up, I would like to have to become this couple, okay, they're sharing, okay, the other guy, okay, the guy first, the man, okay, the elderly man shared, it is part, okay? It is part, okay? And then this guy saying, I thought they are sharing, right? But why he is finishing the food, okay? So the other guy is not, is not uh, minding about the other the, the, the thing, but what he did, so he finished his part, okay? So the whole burger, he finished one part, right? Do you, do you follow me? Right, so he finished one part, okay? So the, the, the young guy, okay, thought that this couple growing about love, okay? Habang tumatanda, nagmamahalan, okay? Sharing about the love, okay? But what happened, he finished one part. Me and my wife is different. One bite for me, one bite for my wife, one bite for me, one bite for my wife, right? But this elderly, he finished first one half, okay? And the young guy says, I thought it's about love, it's about sharing. But, but why this older, older man is not sharing to his, to his wife, okay? So the, uh, again, the older uh, the older man is not minding about the young guy, and he finishes part. He drinks the coke. What? Because he no teeth, no. He drinks the coke, and then when he stops, then the young guy is going to you're going to uh, to judge that man. Okay, who said he said in his mind this young this this guy this old man is not sharing. It's not about the love. I thought it's about love because they are one meal they are sharing. So what happened after he gave the one part? Okay, after he gave the one part, you know what's next? Yes. What's next? <laughs> we don't know what's next. Okay. What's next is he shares also his false teeth. <laughs> That's why the, the woman, the older woman, kaya sa matanda, you know, lang hindi makain. Okay. Because he doesn't have a teeth. So the other guy, the young, the older woman, the older man, after he finished his part, he said, I'm done. So you could see your burger and he's the teeth. So it's about love, right? So would you, would you, would you say it's about love? Sharing? Alright. Just to make you just to make you laugh. Alright. Anyway. Okay, so you you will remember. I hope you won't remember that, but I hope you will remember about God in your life for today. Amen. Okay, so share the love. Okay, not share the positive. Okay, maybe when you grow up. Okay, maybe you, when you get older. No? Okay, maybe you and Grace, Grace and Leslie can share that, that story. Okay. All right. So now I have a question to all of you. Again, what's the essence of Christmas? Some of you are saying blessing. Some of you are saying relationship. Some are saying sharing about love, okay? But sometimes we all know that love is about, Christmas is about love, about hope, about joy, about peace, and everything. Would you agree? Right? There are a lot of meaning, a true meaning to you about Christmas, right? But the most important one about Christmas is about salvation. Right? And also it's about, what's our team? It's about love. Okay, so let's talk about love. Last year, when I'm looking at the message last year, I said, Lord, why did I why did we have a message about give? Why did we didn't have the true meaning about Christmas? It's about love. Okay, later you will find out about why is love. Love is so important. If you're gonna go back to first John chapter 4, verse 6, verse 7, if you go back, let's just go back. First, first John chapter 4, let's go back there. I'm just gonna read it to you. It says here, love one another. Chapter 4, verse 7. It says here, love one another. Dear friend, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and any and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Diba? That's why this is our verse for today. God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life that we might have eternal life okay remember that word that we might have eternal life amen so we're going to talk about that for today but let's talk about some of the essence of christmas or what's the essence of christmas so number one i 
think I don't need the microphone. Right? Do you hear my voice? Loud and clear? All right, so number one, please write down, the birth of Christ show us God's promise. God's promise. Is there a difference between I have a, I have a microphone or not? No. Okay. Well, no. All right, so number one, the birth of Christ show us God's promise. Write down, God's promise. Okay. Why is it God's promise? Why is it God's promise? For centuries. The Israelites, the Jewish people, had been waiting for the birth of the Messiah. Do you know that? Until now, the Jewish people are still waiting for the Messiah. How sad is that? If we're saying, if we're going to share the love, have you shared the love? Who's been here in the Middle East? Middle East part, right? Wait. From, from, from the Middle East, right? Maybe there's a difference. Maybe you are closer. You are more closer about... The Jewish people. Have you seen about the Jewish people there? Until now, they don't know about the Messiah is already here. But they're still waiting for the Messiah. Think about that. We thought that maybe all of the people knows about Jesus. No. Jewish people still don't know about the Messiah. They're still looking. They're st they don't believe about Jesus Christ. Right? So number one, the birth of Christ show us God's promise. Write it down. That God's promise. You can claim that. God's promises. That's why we say the Bible is about God's promises. If Jesus Christ didn't arrive, or if Jesus Christ wasn't born, then there is no promises that we cannot promise to one another. We cannot have a vows with our wife. We cannot have a promise to our to everyone. Right? But make a promise, then make sure you do it. Make sure you fulfill it don't make any promise the Bible says don't make any promise if you don't able to, to, to fulfill it okay but God has a promise and when he said the promise he fulfills it amen praise God so that's number one birth of Christ show us God's promises that's why when we say Lord maybe our prayers you're not answering our prayers no God is answering our prayers there's yes no wait or other amen as I've said, even until now, they are still waiting for the Messiah. How sad is that? I have a patient, I have a client before when we have a business, about the home care business, we have a client that is a Jewish and he's still, until now, he doesn't know about Jesus. Even though I share Jesus to him, he doesn't want to believe it. Right? How sad is that? Right? Until like right now, if we saw people, like Jewish people, they are religious people. They know about the, the Torah. They know about the, the Word of God, about the Word of Moses. But they don't know about Jesus Christ. How sad is that? If we're going to say, we're going to have a celebration next week, share the love, and some people still don't know about Jesus Christ. Do you feel the passion about sharing love to others? Do you feel the passion? As I've said, every Jewish people is still looking. During those times, you remember when the serpent, the serpent, and tongues of so, so, tempted Eve, okay, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God says, Then I will put enmity between you and, and his and her offspring. Until during that time, since then, the Jewish people are still looking for the Messiah. Who is this people? Every woman, every Jewish woman are looking. Who is that woman? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's you. Maybe, you know, but they don't know. Okay? As I've said, every Jewish mother hoped and prayed that her son would be the Messiah. Messiah means the Savior. They are hoping for a Savior who will save them from the Roman Empire. Right? They're looking for a what? For a mighty warrior king. Okay? Like, you know? They firmly believe that the Messiah would be a strong and glorious earthly king. This is the Jewish people who would deliver them from their Roman oppressors and form, once again, a great and independent Jewish kingdom. Okay? But nowadays, what is this? What, this? what does that mean for us right now? About Christmas, birth of Christ, show us God's promise. Say, God's promise. God's promise. But in your prayer, in your daily life, God's promise me this. God's promise me. God's promise me. And believe, like this Christmas, we're not only celebrating about the salvation, about the love, but God fulfilled His promise through Jesus Christ. 
Long ago, prophet will say, there's a son, prophet Isaiah says, for unto a child is born, and in the New Testament, okay, Jesus Christ is born. Amen? Was born? Was born. Okay. Because Jesus is the promise fulfilled. Now, if you have still have a question, it is already the end of the year. If you still have a question, does God answer my prayers? Does God, does, do I have hope in God? Do I have, can I have the promise of God? Yes, because this Christmas, right? God fulfilled His promise through Jesus Christ. Amen? Say, it's a promise fulfilled. Diba? It's a promise fulfilled. Sometimes, we, we can uh, we can agree that you and I we broke our promises. Please raise your hand who broke your promises. <laughs> who broke your promises? Please raise your hand. Everyone, everyone, All right? That's why look, everyone. That's why God fulfilled His promise because everyone broke His promises. Everyone. That's why God died on the cross because everyone, not even one, not even one, is perfect. Everyone. Amen? We all know that we have broken our few of our maybe lack of promises. But God made a promise that one day He would send a Savior into the world. Sometimes we're thinking about Christmas, it's about gift, it's about love, it's about joy, it's about peace, it's about everything. But we forget about God's promise. I'll tell you, brother and sister, God answered His promise. Ah, praise God. Because if God, if Jesus wasn't born, then we don't have this word. We cannot say that this word, right? It said here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says there, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. It means amen. That's why when you're praying, you're agreeing, yes, amen. You're agreeing in Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it says here, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. That's why in a prayer, when you said yes, you are including Jesus Christ as the promises that God will answer your prayers. Amen? When you say amen, you say yes, it is God who will answer my prayer. But it's not only it's not only about the word amen or yes. When you say yes, there's a power to it. Amen? amen. And through Christ, it says here, and through Christ our amen, which means which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. But to God be the glory. Because he knows his word, he he would fulfill his promises to us. Amen. So what is the reflection to us today, brothers and sisters? What do you think about the birth of Jesus Christ? <clears throat> Show us God's promises. What is the reflection to us today? The reflection to us today, please write it down, that God answered us just at the right time. Okay? Just at the right time. Sometimes you're saying, this is what uh, what's wrong with us. Sometimes... Lord, this is my prayer. This is my time. You answer at this time. That's wrong with us. We are saying, we're obligating God that at this time, Lord, we should follow what God's time. It says in James chapter 4, verse 13, if I'm not wrong, said that, as His will, Lord, as Your will, not mine, as Your will be done at Your time. God answer us just at the right time. Amen? So during this time, as, as we talk about for so many years, long, long years, okay, the Jewish people, all of the people are waiting about the Messiah. A Savior had been promised to God's people for centuries. They long and prayed for rescue. And on the right day, in the right place, and at the right time, Jesus was born. Amen. So now you know Christmas is not only about, about our salvation, but God is fulfilling about His promises. He fulfilled His promises. Amen? So when you go out today, you can claim that God answered my prayer because He fulfilled His promise. God's promise. Amen? While God rarely comes at our appointed time, He always comes at the right time. Because what's wrong again? 
we ask for our appointed time. We have our own time. Lord, Lord, Hi. at this time. Okay. Have you experienced that? Have, do you experience that? If someone tells you, okay, it's good that no one tells me here, Pastor, it's time. It's time. Okay. Have you experienced that someone saying to you, at my time, it, it's, it's my time. Have you experienced that? How would you feel? But God said, in His time, not our time, in His time. Amen? All of us are waiting for something. Sometimes we're wondering if God is still hearing us. Right? In your waiting, let the birth of Christ, brother and sister, encourage you and I. Let this Christmas encourage you and I about His <coughs> promises. Would you say amen? Amen. If you agree in what I'm saying, say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Those circumstances may arise in you right now. Okay? Again, listen. Though may circumstances may arise into you right now. Okay? Trials, problems, stress, depression, everything. Those circumstances may arise. God is going to come through on schedule in His right time. Amen? So again, don't give up before the time is right. Alright? Take hope in Christ, in Jesus Christ. I know that you are loved by God from above. Amen? Number two, let's talk about, let's talk about Christmas is about the birth of Christ shows us God's love. And we all know about it. Who's, who knows about God's love? That Christmas is about God's love. Who knows about it? Okay, now I'm going to ask, if you know about it, I'm going to ask, Please explain. Okay. So, who knows about the birth of Christ? Show us God's love. Please explain. Margaret? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Right. 
You don't know about huli ka? When you did something wrong, pag mayroon kong nagawang kasalanan, huli ka. Di ba? Dapat, we becoming holy to holy. Okay? I'll tell you a story. Just this week, maybe because I'm preparing this message, okay? I have a dream. Nagkaroon ng panaginip. Sabi sa panaginip ko, no? Sabi ng panaginip ko doon, my wife says to me, huli ka. Anong ginagawa mo? Huli ka. Sabi ko sa panaginip ko, ha? Ako? May ginagawa? Sabi ko, walang ginagawa. Sabi ko, I'm a pastor. Walang ginagawa. Sabi ko, sabi ko, hindi. Sabi sa panaginip ko, panaginip na to, panaginip na to. Okay? Sabi ko, sabi ko, God changed me. Panaginip na to, panaginip na to. Okay? So, pag-isip ko, panaginip na. Di ba? Di ba? Mas maganda yung sabihin sa'yo na asawa mo, you are holy. Di ba? Holy ka. Di ba? Hindi yung bully ka. Okay? Amen? So again, as I said, we are all sinners and we should be coming holy to holy. Okay? Not yung nahuhuli. Okay? Hindi yung nahuhuli tayo na nahuhuli. Amen? Sino nahuhuli na? Please raise your hand. Sino nahuhuli? No one? No one? Okay, pahuli. We have a renewed mind. Change now. Okay? Change now. You are a new creation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the word of Christ show us God's love. Again, as I've said, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, because we all sinners, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. As I've said, no, God's love is about anger and then about forgiveness. God's forgiveness. God forgave us. That's how God loved all of us. You know the story about Jesus calms the storm. Mark, please look in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I don't have it here. Open your Bible in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Some of you are familiar with this story. Jesus calmed the storm. I'm going to read this one to you. In verse 35, as if he came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus into the inner boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. But soon a fierce storm came up, high waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. In verse 38, it says there, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Write it down. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, Shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the wave, Silence and be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Okay, most of us, when we read this story about this, this story in the Bible, what we think about? Jesus calmed the storm. He said, Peace, be still. What, you, what word are you thinking about? Most of you, what are you thinking about? Are you familiar about this story? Yes. What comes to you in your, to your mind when you heard this story about Jesus calm the storm? Um, Jesus sovereign, that, um, that even nature he can control. Amen. That he is sovereign God. That even the nature, the disciples said, even him, even the storm come to him. Okay, the, the storm, the raging storm, come when Jesus said, silence, be still. Okay? If, I, if, you're, if the person beside you is talking, silence, be still. Okay? Alright? So it says there, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. With his, with his head on a cushion. There is a same similar story about this. What is the similar story about this? The similar story about this is about Jonah. Okay, you're familiar about Jonah. What happened to Jonah? Jonah chapter 1, it says there, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce, me, announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Jonah was used... Is. Is. Jonah was... Jonah is used by God. Okay? Jonah is used by God. However, what did Jonah do? What did he do? He ran away. Okay? 
he ran away. In verse 3, it says there, if you're going to go to Jonah, okay, Jonah chapter 1 in verse 3 says there, but Jonah got up and went into the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Okay, there's a, what you call, disobedience from God. Okay, God told him, go to Nineveh. Okay, announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked these people are. But Jonah, instead of following, he disobeyed. Okay, he disobeyed. But Jonah got up and went into the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Okay, in verse 4, let's continue. He went down to the, to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled, hurled a powerful wind over the sea <coughs> causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. There's a, there's a, there's a storm. You know about this story, right? There's a storm and what ended? There is a shark. A big fish. Okay. Amen? It's not a shark. Okay. It's not a whale. It is a big fish. Alright? Okay. But the Lord heard a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Okay. Now listen to this story. Listen to this part. But all this time, Jonah was... What? Sound asleep. Right? He's still sound asleep. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep. You remember Jesus Christ? What did what Jesus Christ? Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Imagine that. See, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is already comfortable sleeping even though there's a storm. That's what you call peace that I gave you. Is that the word that gives? When you are in this trend, you should have peace with Jesus Christ. But even though in the even though there's a storm, there's a a uh, raging storm in your life right now, you are still at peace. Amen? Say, peace. 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 So the same story with Jonah, but all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the whole area. Now, so this is what happened. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at this time like this? Okay? So it's already raging sea, okay? And then Jonah is still sleeping because he knows, right? Get up, the captain said, get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Jonah answered, he knows what's the cost, right? Sometimes you know what's the cost into your life right now. You know what's the cost why you are in your trials right now. You are the cost. Sometimes we are the cost, right? Sometimes it is us. We are blaming other people, we are blaming someone, but it is us. You know what's the cause of your circumstances right now. Maybe you are maybe you are you are in debt right now because you are overspending. Right? Especially this Christmas. Can I see your credit card this Christmas? I would I would believe that it would be so up high. Would you agree? Amen. There are lots of buys, toys. You know, give family in the Philippines, those things, you know. Credit cards is going up high. But there are a lot of money is wasted. Amen. So Jonah in verse 9 says here, Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew. And I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. So this is the confession of Jonah. He said, throw me into the sea. Jonah said it will become calm again. I know that this is terrible storm. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. If we're gonna look at this one, as I said, God's love, before God's love, it, there's a forgiveness. <coughs> Mommy said, all of us, we all know about Christmas is about God's love. Amen? It's about God's love. Okay? But remember that we are all sin. That's why Jesus Christ was born, was sent here into the world. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we forgot that you are sinners, that we are all sin. Even until now, we all sin. We disobey from God. Right? But what we're talking about here is the story about Jesus Christ who is innocent and the story about who is Jonah about? Guilty. He's guilty. So he should be thrown into the sea. But what happened to Jesus Christ? He was thrown into our iniquities. He became sin for us. Imagine that this Christmas, he is the, he is the 
is the pay kabayaran he is the ransom for our sins imagine that sometimes we are, we are over so well about buying gift about giving about sharing but sometimes we forgot the important essence of christmas is about how god saved you how god saved us if, instead of us being thrown into the into the hell into the lake of fire it is god who died on the cross imagine that jonah is guilty but jesus christ is not guilty but he was thrown into the world for god so loved you and i that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life we said in first john chapter 4 verse 9 whoever believes Let's read here. God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life. That we might have eternal life. That you and I might have eternal life. Why we might have? It is because it is your personal response to respond to the call of God. When God sent His Son to us, what is your response? But what is our response? I have here in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give His life as a ransom for many. Imagine that. God's forgiveness. As I've said, we talk about love for today. January, win love. December, share the love. That in verse 7, it says here, I like to call brother next. It says here in verse 7, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Look at your Bible. Everyone look at your Bible. I don't have it here. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. Okay? Let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Let us continue to love one another. For, God, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God. As Margaret saying, the other guy, the other man, saw about God's love, not in his word, but through your action. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now the question is, what we're talking about here, it's about love. Now, Go back into your life. It is almost the end of the year. From January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Next year is a new year, right? Sometimes throughout the year, from January up to December, if there's still someone in you that you haven't forgiven, how about you saying that I love God if you cannot forgive? Right? Look into your life. Into your life. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's co-workers. Maybe someone is special to you, look up in your heart right now. If you're saying that I'm a child of God, if you're a child of God, then you should be showing love to one another. Right? So before the end of this year, make a love that, that God's love for God so love the world. He doesn't, he should not do that. But it is God's love for you and me that he forgave us. Imagine that. It is almost the end of the year and if you're still having those Rajas, if you're still not forgiving other people, the Bible says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. I believe before you love, you forgive. Right? Because God forgive you and I. We say, I love this person. I love brother. I love sister. Lord, forgive my sin for I gave others. No. If you're gonna, if you're going to talk to or if you're going to if you're going to uh, what's the word? Uh, accept no declare okay. if you're going to declare right now okay maybe this word our word today you know about Christmas about gift about peace about joy about love okay but the important thing God is showing God is telling to us all of us before you can love, you should forgive. Before, because before God loved us, I told you before, there is God's anger. But after that, there is God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And there is God's love because God sent His Son into the world. Amen? So, 
just have a moment in your life, you and I, okay, you and I are still guilty, right? Remove all those grudges, release those persons, release those grudges into your hearts right now and say it and declare it and you can stand up high and you can go up this room that say, I am a child of God because I am, God is love into my life. Do you know what I mean? Diba? Napakahirap, nalalabas tayo, matatapos na naman ng taon, na you still have grudges. If you still have grudges, you are wasted the whole year. If you're saying, Lord, I have you in my life, you forgive me, then I'm able to forgive others. Right? I tell you, before in love, there is forgiveness. Okay? So, think about, have one minute. Think about those persons, those people who hurt you, who have missed there are some mistakes in you, who have wrong in you, who have hurt you, right? And forgive. Don't listen to my word. Focus on that person and say, Lord, I release them. I release this person. I release these people. I release this, this, uh, itong pangyayari, these experiences of God into my life. And then, you will be set free in loving God. Hallelujah, Lord of God, Jesus. I believe, O oh God Jesus, that you are love, O oh God Jesus. And if you are love, O oh God Jesus, we will we will experience that because you are promised to each one of us. Hallelujah, O oh God Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, napakasarap, Panginoon, O oh God. It is so wonderful, O oh God, that you came to the world, O oh God, that you forgave us, that we, give, that we are able to forgive others. Lord, help us, O oh God, Jesus. I believe, I know, Lord, O oh God, that it's hard to forgive. But Lord, when you forgive us, it is not hard for you, O oh God. So help us, O oh God, Jesus, to have a heart like yours, O oh God. Break the hearts that we have right now, O oh God, and change this heart into yours, O oh God. That people will see in us, O oh God, about loving others, completely loving others, O oh God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, as we said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. This is what it says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Brothers and sisters, if you are lost, if you are still lost, don't wait tomorrow, don't wait for next year and say, Lord, I'm just going to wait for next year to accept you. There are many times in your life that you hear the word of God, but there is no time for you to respond. This is the right time for you to respond about God's love into your life because you know about God's love that He came into this world to save you. Hallelujah, God, Jesus. Father God in heaven, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful love, oh God, for your wonderful gift, oh God, Jesus, that we will re that we will that we receive, oh God, Jesus. And as we said today, brothers and sisters, John chapter three, verse sixteen: For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Sometimes we forget about the verse 17. In verse 17, it says here, God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. That is the essence of Christmas. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're thinking about the gift, we're thinking about the party, we're thinking about how we are able to give one another, but look at, the, look at yourself before you give to others. How are, you, how are you going to give to others if you yourself don't receive anything from God? This is the word of God today. God is not just, God is not angry to all of us. I said a while ago, God is anger, God's forgiveness, God's love. But I tell you, brother and sister, God is not anger to you. God loves you. Because God loves you. God said. God the Father sent His Son into the world not to judge you. We've done a lot of things into our life. People will judge us. People will judge you, will look down on you because the things that you have done wrong, but God didn't judge us. There's no condemnation anymore with God because we are in Christ. This is a wonderful word from God. Listen, brothers and sisters. Let's read this one all together. It says here, 
God sent His Son into the world not to judge you. Who feel here that you are being judged by other people? You are being judged by someone by this by this world. But when you look to Jesus Christ this Christmas, when you look unto Him, focus on Him, He said, I didn't judge you. I came here to save you. In Luke 19 verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Who are lost here? If you are lost, declare that I am not lost because I have Christ in me. You have to make a declaration. You have to make a response to Jesus Christ calling to you right now. For the Son of Man came to seek and save to those who are lost. I was lost. I declare that. I was lost. But God redeemed me. But God saved me. I have Jesus Christ who saved me. That is the essence of Christmas. Sometimes we are all, all, always forgot those things. What is the true essence of Jesus Christ that He came into this world? He didn't just came into the world just as uh, just you know. There's there's a major celebration, but the true meaning is He was born to die and to live. On the third day, He lived. Imagine that, when you were born to die, but Jesus Christ, He was born to die and live. That's why we are, we are overcomers. Our soul this morning, we overcome because we have Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. This is what we're talking about. Jesus Christ died on the cross. If He died there, some other religions saying that Jesus died on the cross and He's still on the cross. They fixed Jesus Christ at the cross. That's not my God. That's not our God. Because Jesus Christ is alive. Amen? Amen. We can say to one of our friends, Your God, that's not Jesus. Right? Share the love. Share the truth. Share the gospel. Make the passion. We said last week, make the move. Because they still, the king still has a move. Hallelujah. Let's go back this one before we end. Let's all read this one. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through Him. This is what we can say to other people, to your friends, to your father, to your mother, to your family who still don't know about God. Tell them, God won't judge you. Okay? God didn't judge me. I'm a sinner. Okay? You and I, we accept that, right? We are guilty about it, that we are a judging people. Once we, load, once, we, once we saw someone, we judge them quickly, right? But with, with, but with God, with Jesus Christ, He didn't judge us. That you can say a promise to other people. God, this Christmas, God didn't came to judge the world, but to save the world. Not only you, not only us. Everyone, even the Jewish people, even the Gentiles, everyone. God saved the world. And that's the true essence of Christmas. It's about God's love. Alam nyo, I was wondering with this word, as I said, you know, January, we start about win love. We should be a winners of love in our life, okay? And I believe next year, next year, okay, we will start a new year in our life, right? A new blessings, a new God's promises into our life. But before we end into that year, okay, take cherish, okay? Tatao sa Tagalog doon? Talagang namnamin nyo. That's the English. Huh? 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 Say more. Say more? Namnamin? The other word. Say more? Cherish. Cherish the love of God. Okay? We all admit this one. We all admit this, brother and sister, that we are so busy with buying gifts, we are so busy in thinking about other people, about giving them gift, financially helping them one another, okay? But before you're able to give, what we're talking about here, focus on the one who gives first, okay? It is Jesus, okay, who gave his life, okay? That is the true essence. You know what, in our uh, Christmas Eve 24, okay, when you're when you by yourself, or maybe you with your family, you pray together and be thankful about what we have received, okay? Be always thankful about God, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, okay? 
Sometimes we are o- we are overtaking, we are overlooking about the word John 3:16. For God so loved the word that He gave His son. Okay, sometimes we're we're being like that. No, cherish that. You may hear my no. For God so loved the word, and you are including in the word that He gave His one and only son. Hallelujah. So again, share the love, brother and sister. Share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. So who's gonna share the love of Jesus Christ? You say yes or amen. 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 Would you say right now when I go here in your prayer, make a prayer to your life, okay? Whenever I speak, I will speak about love. And you don't have to memorize the Bible and speak about theology about the Bible, but speak truly about God's love. About you are not condemned, you are not judged, you are not judged by God, you are loved by God. Okay, and through your action, through your words, okay, through your action, they will know that you are a true believer of the one who gives love. Amen. Let's bow our head. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord, oh God, Jesus, to you, oh God, Jesus, all the glory and honor, oh God, Jesus. Father God, Lord, there is not enough word to explain our expression of love to you, oh God, Jesus. There's no words to say, oh God, Jesus, to, all the, to say, oh God, Jesus, on how you love for us, oh God. But Lord, there's one thing that we are truly would like to say to you, oh God. Thank you, oh God, Jesus. Thank you for your love love you, God. When we say we love you, brother and sister, when you say, I love you, Lord, when you mean it, you are owed to love one another. Would we say, would we say I love you, Lord? Hallelujah, God. Praise you, God, Jesus, Lord. In this year, God, Jesus, we are so thankful, God, Jesus. We are so grateful, God, Jesus, for your wonderful blessings, oh God, to all of my brothers and sisters, to all of us, oh God. And into this ministry of yours, oh God, Jesus, that you are the head of this church, oh God. You are the head of the church in our life. You are the head of each one of us. Thank you, Father Lord, for your wonderful love, oh God. We may not forget about you, oh God, Jesus, every day that we, in our words, should come out into our mouth, oh God, about you, Lord, about the love. Thank you, Father Lord. Help one another, Lord. Help us, oh God, Jesus, to forgive others, oh God, that that we, that the love of you, O God, will manifest in our life. Thank you, O God, Jesus, for the fruitful year. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for my brother and sister, for their blessings, O God, for their family, O God, Jesus, that they come here in Canada, O God, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord, and we may be declared and we may glorify your name every day, O God, in our words, in our action, O God, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, and yours is the honor. And thank you, Lord, O God, Jesus, for your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, everybody say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.